The substitution of terms for variables is an elementary process by which we can construct new expressions from existing ones. Substitutions are denoted with Greek letters and are usually represented as a set as follows. Here we can see each variable together with the term that will substitute it. Let's take a look at how substitutions are applied in the case of predicate logic expressions. Substitutions do not apply to constants. We can therefore say that a constant c under substitution sigma is still c. For variables, if they're found in the substitution, they will be replaced with their corresponding term. Otherwise, they will be left untouched. For functions, the substitution will be applied to all of the terms given to the function. For predicates, the substitution will be applied to all of the terms given to the predicate. This is the same as for functions. When applied to a negation, conjunction, disjunction, implication or equivalence of predicates, the substitution will be applied to each predicate individually. A special case when applying substitutions comes from quantified formulas. In the case of a quantified formula, we will not substitute the bound variable, skipping it and only substituting everything else. Let's now look at a practical example using the following substitution sigma. Let's start by applying it to this simple expression. We begin by applying the substitution to the function f, which we do by applying it to all of its terms. We then apply substitution to x plus y, which is also a function, just written using inset notation. Therefore, we apply sigma to its terms. Finally, we can apply the substitution to all of the variables in parallel. Let's take a look at a more advanced example, including a quantified formula. The first step is applying the substitution to the implication, meaning we need to apply it to both of the formulas. For the first predicate p, applying the substitution is only a matter of applying it to its terms. However, in the case of the quantified formula, we notice that the variable x is bound, and therefore we cannot apply the substitution x becomes f of y and z, and we must remove it. We then propagate the substitution the same way as before until it is applied to all of the variables. Finally, we can apply the substitution in parallel to all of the variables. Notice how effectively what happened is that x was still replaced with f of y and z outside of the quantified formula, but not inside of it. Let's now look at how we compose substitutions. We will take theta and sigma to be the following substitutions, where x and y will be the set of variables that appear in theta and sigma respectively. The composition of the substitutions theta and sigma is a substitution defined as the following set. In natural language, we can see that the composition theta sigma is formed by applying the substitution sigma to the terms of theta and adding any pairs from sigma whose variables do not appear in theta. Let's look at an example using the following two substitutions. To compute theta sigma, we'll combine the two sets but with two modifications. To every term of theta, we will first apply the substitution sigma. We will also remove from sigma any pairs whose variables is already remapped in theta. In this case, we must remove the pair containing the variable y. After performing the substitutions in the first set, we can notice we are left with the pair z becomes z, which should be removed since substituting a variable with itself wouldn't make any sense. Finally, we can now simply combine the two sets. Substitutions can only be carried out when they do not change the meaning of the expression on which they are applied. Let's take a look at the expression exists y such that x equals 2y. Intuitively, this says that x is an even number. Let's now consider what would happen if we substituted x with y plus 1. The formula would become exist y such that y plus 1 equals 2y and its meaning would have changed. This happened because the variable y from y plus 1 became bound when inserted into the quantified formula, which should not be allowed. To prevent this, let's define some rules for substitutability. In terms and atomic formulas, substitution can always be carried out as they only contain free variables. The term t is substitutable for x in not f, if and only if t is substitutable for x in f. The term t is substitutable for x in the conjunction, disjunction, implication, or equivalence of f and g, 
if and only if t is substitutable for x in both f and g. Quantified formulas are the more dangerous case, since these are where we will be dealing with bound variables. The term t is always substitutable for x in quantified formulas where x is bound. Note, however, that this substitution will have no effect, since as discussed, we skip substituting the bound variable when applying substitutions to quantified formulas. The term t is substitutable for x in quantified formulas where x is not bound only if t is substitutable for x in f and the bound variable does not appear in t. This last rule is what saves us from the situation outlined above.